What's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. Spring is finally here. It's about time. It's like 70 degrees. It's a gorgeous day. All I want to do is yard work. But unfortunately, we can't always get what we want. I can't do yard work. I can't really do much of anything because one of my teeth broke and uh, there's an abscess and it's infected. I've been to the dentist, they're treating it. I'm going for a root canal, hopefully sometime soon. It comes and goes, right now it's not too bad. But you know, if the problem is like, if I get my heart rate up at all, there's just this pounding, throbbing, stabbing pain in my face. But I figured it's a beautiful day. Go to Lowe's, it's right down the street. We'll see what they have, walk around. I have a pot that I need to repair which really shouldn't be too physically demanding. I can just kind of sit down and try and glue it back together and do some things. So let's go to the hardware store, pick up some uh, compounds and epoxy. We're just gonna chill together. This isn't going to be a very exciting vlog probably, I'm sorry. Um, but that's just, you know, the way it goes. But look at how pretty. You guys, look, 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 do you see it? Do you see it? Ugh. Bradford pears are invasive and they smell nasty, but oh my goodness, so pretty. But yeah, I have a big pot that broke in the winter time. It shouldn't have, it says it was frost proof, but um, apparently it wasn't. I need to put it back together. It needs to be watertight because it's actually the basin of the bowl I use as a fountain. And I did drain it before winter got here, but it must've just still have retained some moisture. I don't know. There are different options different products I can use. There's Gorilla Glue, JB Weld, there are cement epoxies, there are cements, those get more complicated and I would need an awful lot of them. So I think I'm gonna go with JB Weld, which is a two-part epoxy you blend together. Then I'll probably seal it in with some silicone. I have Flex Seal, which is supposed to be great stuff, but I don't know how toxic it is. And uh, this is the the fountain that I'm repairing is one that I have for my dogs to drink out of. So I think I'm just going to go silicone. I don't know. We'll see what they have at the hardware store. so many choices, but at least the two I'm looking for are right next to each other. That's nice. That's kind of cute. They had a pretty cute selection. Some nice stuff. There's still some lows coming up that are going to be in like the maybe upper 20s and lower 30s. So I'm still a little bit skeptical and I really can't do much anyways. I could do light planting, um, but nothing that requires like using a big shovel and digging big holes, but I could probably toss together small planters. Uh, but I just don't have all the materials yet to get going on that. I don't think I do at least. Uh, home. Nope. Copyrights. Look at that magnolia. Okay, actually, not looking its best. It just, it started to pop open and held onto those buds throughout the cold spell and yeah. I mean, it's still pretty, but not, not looking its best. Pumpkin. What you doing? I missed you, but. Okay, just got off the phone with the endodontist and I'm writing down so I don't forget in my horrible handwriting. It's hard to write when you're looking through a viewfinder, but uh, you know what? My handwriting sucks anyways. So, Root Canal Friday. That should be fun. I don't know if I'll still be vlogging at that point or not. Is that something you guys would want to go along with me on? Yeah, probably not. All right, so I ended up getting the JB Weld. I have the grill glue in there too, but they only had one package of it. 
So this is what I'm using. And to get around toxicity, because I would imagine that if this is in water, the dogs probably shouldn't drink out of it, I grab some aquarium grade silicone. I could have just bought a big tube for, excuse me, excuse me. So I could have just gotten a big tube, but I don't know how much I'm gonna need because I just wanna put like a coating over this, but that's probably not even gonna happen today because I think this is gonna need to dry for 24 hours. But this is non-toxic, so that will go over this. And then I'll probably end up putting a pond liner in the whole thing anyways, but just trying to be safe. Doesn't say anything about it needing to be wet, so okay. Let's just go do it then. I do have some gloves here. Okay, so I started putting this pot back together and I think this is gonna be a two-person job. You can see the brakes are here. It's like four or five big pieces. And they fit back together nicely. But I am missing one piece. It's a problem though. The center piece has to go in first for them all to fit together. So I'm actually gonna need another person to hold it. I'm gonna have to put this up on something. I tried to like find something to stack underneath it to hold it, but getting it at just the right height, I wasn't able to figure it out. So, Turns out this is not happening right now. But the good news, they're all fitting together pretty well. Just not that that one missing piece. Oh well, whatever, it's fine. I'll put a liner in it. Oh, it's a beautiful day. It's the next day, actually. I uh, wasn't feeling too great when I was messing with stuff yesterday, so I called it a day, called it quits, went inside and rested. But it's like 80 degrees outside. And my dogs are acting like they're on the surface of the sun. Root canal tomorrow morning, and things will be better after that. Right? I finally got one of these fancy DRAM watering thingies. I've always heard great things about DRAM, but I've never been willing to spend the money on it. I'm happy to finally have this. What does this say here? It says, the brass in this product is known in the state of California. Oh, it contains lead. What? There'll be lead on all kinds of things, and I didn't know it. DRAM, why are you trying to make me sick? It's rubber most of the spots you touch. I'm sure it's fine. I'd like to finish this up, but I really think I need another person, so I'm gonna have to keep on waiting. Can clean the pool. The water's kinda white and milky because the salt generator isn't running. The water's been too cold, so I may do a little bit of that. I could clean these leaves out. There's pretty gravel underneath all those. I could probably rake. That's not gonna cause any problems. And there's plenty of pruning to do. You can see that needle palm over there has some, uh, it, it lost some leaves over the winter, so I guess I'll I'll do those things. You know what? There is something very satisfying about raking. I think I'm just happy to be outside working. Oh, these leaves smell really bad. Uh, have you been pooping over here? Gross. First swim of the year. Okay, I tossed together an impromptu fountain. Go ahead, get your water. As uh, the dogs are thirsty. I don't think they feel like waiting for me to finish this bowl. That'll do for now. Doesn't fully make sense, but whatever. It's clean water they can drink out of. Okay, so I got the needle pumps kind of tidied up. Got all this cut off, all that cut off, and there's more down there. Main thing I've been doing here is making sure to get the crown open back up, because this is where most of the damage was. See, if you give the spear a tiny tug, it's not giving. And particularly, it's gonna be hard to do this without cutting myself. But there's a much smaller spear in there. The spear is the center leaf. That one's still green. Well, I tugged it earlier, it's not budging. It's a needle palm. I don't wanna put my hands in there if I don't have to. So that's good. The crown pulled out of one of my smaller ones and I sprayed it with a copper-based fungicide and I cut every, let me go show you. Okay, so this guy over here is much more exposed and younger. And you can see uh, the crown pulled out from in here, kind of. Can't see my viewfinder, sorry. But uh, this one will probably pull out too. Nope. What about you? You look loose. No? All right, so it's just that one. That is one of the nice things about the needle palms is there are clustering palms. So sometimes you do lose a trunk in a bad winter, but you have all these little palm pups around it, offshoots that help make up for it and make it not as noticeable. But I did put some fungicide in there and I cut a lot of stuff out from in there so that the air can move through it. If in the forecast it starts to look like we're going to have a lot of rain, then I'll probably put something over this to keep it dry for the next several weeks. Just to be safe. I almost forgot. So this guy right here, <laughs> the handheld piece from Dram, it's nice. I honestly don't really see much of a difference in this versus any of the other ones I've ever had. Except that, for some reason, the fan setting 
goes up and down instead of side to side. Most of them it goes like this, which I prefer because then I can set it back and water or lightly water a wide area, but not with it like this. I don't really understand the point of it being sideways. Honestly, this doesn't really feel like anything special. Uh, in fact, I actually prefer my other one better. The jet on it is decent, but my other one has two stream settings, one that's like a sharp jet and one that's like a thick, so you can still use it for things far away, but not necessarily destroy them from the water pressure. I don't know, just my thoughts on that one. I did, however, also pick up one of the Dram watering ones. This guy right here. And I really like this. It's a good flow. It doesn't have much pressure to it, so I can't stand far away to water the plants. I guess that's why it's a wand, and they have a longer wand too. My water pressure is a little low today too for some reason. I'm not sure what that's about, but uh, I do like the coverage. I like the flow, how it comes out. It doesn't have settings. It's just, it's just one piece with a whole bunch of little tiny holes in it. This one, I do notice a difference between this and other watering ones. I do like this one. It's, it's pretty nice. And it's time to go get a root canal. Pumpkin! Pumpkin, you excited for root canals? No, me either. I keep trying to show you how pretty... Oh, I just got back from my root canal, and my mouth is dumb. So it's kind of hard to talk. <laughs> Sorry. We're supposed to have storms, and it's supposed to be like 30 degrees in a couple days. I keep trying to get this on camera, and it just won't show. It's more for my memories than anything else. Whatever. My mouth feels better for the first time in a week, so that is fantastic, but it's really hard to talk, and uh, I keep like biting my face and my tongue, so I have to be careful about talking right now. The bad news, though, is that they said the pain's going to be worse for the next few days, and I was like, that's hard to imagine, because the infection was below the tooth and not just in it, so... The pain from the tooth will be better, but the tooth didn't hurt that much. And they would only prescribe me some Motrin. So, <laughs> next few days is going to be kind of intense. But right now, I feel good. I can't feel anything. And I keep thinking that I'm drooling, but I'm not. So that's good. Oh, we're back in the car. Yeah, it's been a few days. A lot has happened, kind of. So, last time I was talking to y'all, I just gotten home from my root canal was fairly pain-free. Uh, yeah, that did not last very long. Once the numbness wore off, worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. And that's not from the root canal. The root canal was pretty much painless. I didn't feel a thing. Uh, what happened is what's called an acute inflammatory response to instrumentation. Because I was already in pain before the root canal because the infection wasn't just in my tooth, it was also uh, just kind of in my jaw. So having the root canal basically was kind of like pouring salt in a wound, you could say. So yeah, long story short, basically spent the last two days laying in bed, trembling, like just in absolutely excruciating pain. Like at one point I was like haunched over just bawling my eyes out. But it's okay, everything's temporary and I feel better now. Still like a mild irritation, but it's not that bad. Nothing I can't handle at this point. Um, all I've taken today are a couple ibuprofen and that seems to be working. But, uh, I was taking some meds much stronger than ibuprofen and they were not helping. So, I'm happy to be back. I'm sorry that there was no vlog last weekend. I just, I couldn't edit. Also, how beautiful, how beautiful. Holy freaking crap, how beautiful. Oh my goodness. Do you believe me if I told you it's actually 29 degrees outside right now? Well, it is. It was 81 last time I talked to y'all, but not anymore. So I basically had to make the decision that I wasn't going to be able to release the video on Saturday. The root canal is on Friday. Saturday is really a blur to me, so it, there is no way I could edit a video. And it's actually kind of hard to record, so because my hands are still a little bit trembly and shaky, which is more from, I think, anxiety. Because when you have pain like that, you also become very anxious. So, um because of like fear of the pain returning. I'm still kind of fighting off that adrenaline. Everything's okay though. Um, I think I'm just gonna run this vlog through to next weekend because I'm not really gonna be able to do much this week either. I'm still supposed to like keep it calm and keep my heart rate down and whatnot. So it probably won't even be that much of a vlog anyways, even though it's gonna be two weeks. So I'm sorry about that. It's got the hookup. Look at all these. 
for eight bucks. That is a great deal. I mean, some of these are like overflowing. Um, most of those are dead. Not dormant. Gotta bring your figs in when it drops into the 20s, especially when they're shipped straight up from Florida. There's still some life in some of them. Not full price life though. So this just happened. So I need to make like a little table to put them on. <sighs> Luckily, a few years ago my old tiki bar broke and they replaced it. I saved the shelves. Ah. Boom. Table. Is it hoarding if you actually use the things that you refuse to throw away? Now that things are warming up, need to go through to the perennials. Start cutting back the dead stuff. When they're in pots, I usually leave the dead stuff on because it provides a little bit of protection. As long as it's not soaking wet and doesn't look like it's going to rot. I usually just leave it and trim it back in the spring. And then this is a Creeping Jenny, which has a teeny tiny little bitty sign of life there. So I'm just going to go through and cut all the dead stuff out. And once I'm done with that, I usually just use my fingers for this little stuff and just kind of break it up a little bit and then I'll shake it off because the new growth is so delicate. Don't want to upset it or accidentally pull it out because it does pull out fairly easily. But the whole point of this is to allow air and sun to get in there to help get things going again. That should do. What are you looking at? They're excited about something. Hug him. What's wrong? What do you want to love? Oh, yeah. Good girl. Oh, look at that. This is my buckeye, and it actually has been flowering. See that back there? This is a red buckeye, and I have had this plant for years. It came to me in the mail, it was just a teeny tiny little stick, and every single year somebody has managed to cut this down with a lawnmower or weed whacker. Except for the last two years, I kept it protected and warned people, and now it's finally big enough that it's got all this really cool growth on it. Isn't that neat where the new growth comes out of these awesome like pods it puts out. There's gonna be flowers at the end here. I know this doesn't look that cool. The red buckeye though, the white one's really common. The red is, I've had a harder time finding at least when I bought this like seven or eight years ago. This would normally be a fairly decent sized plant, probably at least 10 or 12 feet tall by now, but they look really cool. I'll insert a picture of a mature plant here. I love it, that's very exciting. It's the next day. This whole entire only being able to do a few things for a few minutes, really getting on my nerves, but that's okay. Everything's good. What you doing? Ew, ew. I'm gonna try and get some stuff done. I feel much better, by the way, like so much better. I was even able to lay down to sleep. I had to sit up to sleep for the past two weeks. Something about the blood flow and the pressure, I don't know, it was just annoying, but I am feeling much better. But the problem is when I crouch down for too long, I get my blood flow going. Sometimes the pain starts to come back, so still baby stepping back into things, but it's a beautiful day, there are lots of little things I can do, and it's time to get this pot handled. I'm so sick of looking at this, I'm just going to do it. Because sometimes you just you just got to do it, you just got to do things, and that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm only going to record kind of the beginning of it, because it is... Okay, it doesn't look that windy. You just have to take my word for it. It's incredibly windy, and I, my, I don't have a, one of the... There's weights you can put on your tripod, I don't have one. So... I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Okay, so I got all my materials here. It says, clean the area, did that, remove the cap, press down, squeeze amounts, and I'm gonna squeeze this epoxy into here. I'll use the stir stick, mix it up, and I'm going to spread it along the surfaces and start adhering things. That's pretty much it. Pop this guy off. Oh, I had forgotten how much this stuff stinks. Very stinky stuff. Need to leave room to mix. Pull the plunger back so it doesn't drip. I'm just gonna mix it on up. Got my gloves on here, cause of, you know, safety first. And I'm just gonna start rubbing this through all these spots, which I don't think are in focus at all. And then I just take my other piece here and set it on in. Get everything lined up and pressed in tight. Nice and tight. There we go. I'm just gonna do the same thing throughout the rest of the pot. Hey, right, it's been about 15 seconds and I have an update. This isn't going to work. 
this stuff cures way too fast for what I'm doing because that's gonna take me a while to get it put around all those nooks and crannies so I'm just gonna have to gorilla glue this thing gorilla glue so if this you just lightly dampen one side apply it and wait 24 hours I'd prefer the other stuff because it sets in five minutes cures in an hour but you gotta do what you gotta do I could mix smaller batches of the other stuff and do it differently but it would take a really 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 long time I can't use my finger to apply it because it gets really hot this is fine it'll do uh, yeah, I was just sitting down at the table and the wind just pulled this thing right out and I grabbed it midair. I don't, I don't, I need someone come help me. Alright, that worked, but it did what Gorilla Glue does, which is foam out. I knew it was going to do that and I was just like, you know what, I don't even care. I'll put some small plants around that and it won't even matter. It's all good. I'm still going to have to put a liner in here and do a bunch of other things. Uh, not going to be able to do that today. So I'm having one of these mornings where nothing works out the way it's supposed to. Like, the way I perceive things should work out, I should say. This clam here, this clamshell planter I picked up from at home, popped a couple holes in it. And I was thinking, hey, I have these really pretty Gerber daisies and some Bacopa. That would be a fun and easy, quick little springtime thing to toss together. But this doesn't, look, it doesn't stand up on its, it just wants to hang out like this. And to me, so it'd be, you'd be viewing it like this. And that's weird. Like, I don't, it doesn't fully look like a clam. I should have flattened the bottom so that it sits up a little bit. I'll show, add another one. This guy right here has a flat bottom. And you can tell it's a clam. Now, luckily, I happen to have an excess of clamshell planters. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one, though. Maybe it just has to be a decoration for now. There we go. Art. Yeah, not really. I'll figure something else out later. Alright, so see here, I have these two Gerber daisies, and I was thinking I would put them, this will work. These clams are a little different from the other ones, like you can't really tell they're clams once they're planted up. Look, they're actually made to be planters. I wish the Gerber daisies matched, but what can you do? I actually don't really care, they're both pretty. And then uh, I have this hanging basket full of Bacopa. This is a pink variety. I don't know what the variety is called. Candy Mountain? I don't know, I think Candy Mountain's more pink than this. But what I was thinking was I could go ahead and divide this up and use that in these. That's what I do with a lot of my planters, is I like to actually find my trailers and hanging baskets. Because they're already so big and developed, and I mean, I never spend more than maybe 10 to $12 on a hanging basket for this purpose. But there's usually four to five plants inside of them. So it just comes out a little bit cheaper, and the plants are usually bigger, more developed. But the downside is you then have to wait for them to reestablish, because you have to tear them up a little bit. They don't always appreciate that. So things don't always come out beautiful right from the get-go, but after a couple weeks, they bounce back and it looks fine. And end up saving like, I don't know, 10 bucks, maybe something like that. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to do here. I'm get in here and unclip this. I always love the baskets where the clips actually just snap off like that. It makes it so much easier. Alright, then I just get that popped out of the basket. This is not lighting. It's not, not on our side today. Sorry, guys. But, uh, yeah. So I can look in here and see the multiple plants, I have them all pulled up, and then I'm just going to go in here and start dividing them up. Just come up here and get these sectioned off. So I can already see here, there's one here, there's another there, another one here, another one here, and another. So four plants. I usually hope for five, but four is not bad. This basket was $11.99, so it comes out to three bucks a plant which is a little bit cheaper than plants have been this year. For some reason, everything's like $5.99 at the nurseries. I don't, I don't understand why everything's gotten so expensive, but maybe that's just where I live. I don't know. So I'm going to slice, slice, and pull them apart. Oh, wait, quick update. There is a fifth plant. It's just, just a really tiny, stringy little thing in the middle. But, I mean, that is technically a fifth. It's, a, it's another plug in there. So that's good. Except I have two planters. Eh. Alright, so those pulled apart very, very easily. Uh, I What I went ahead and did, since there were five and I have two different planters here, I went ahead and I put the two larger of the Bacopas over here, then the three smaller ones over there. And then I'll go ahead and unpot the Gerber daisies and get these guys potted up. Should be pretty simple. I have another update. Um, I forgot to buy potting soil. See what I was saying? Like, sometimes you just have those days. I'm just too scatterbrained to function today. So I guess I gotta run to the Home Depot and pick up some potting. Ugh. 
don't worry. I'm not gonna, I've talked in the car enough. I'll be back. Maybe I'll vlog there. I don't know, we'll see. Hello, what can I get started for you? Look at how pretty everything is. Okay, that gets, maybe it's not that pretty. I don't know. I was taking the paper off my straw and I was doing that thing where you, you know, bang it on your knee. I bent my straw. Oh well. Life isn't so bad if that's the biggest problem today. Okay, that's a really good price. Home Depot's got the hookup on pansies if you're wondering. Okay, and just to clarify, I did have my materials laid out and uh, there was a bag of soil and it, I, I wasn't paying attention. It was actually garden compost, a soil amend from Monrovia. It, you know, simple mistake, it happens. Not a big deal. Plus, I got to go out and get some coffee, which is always fun. Also, just a moment here for like a little bit of a mini rant flash, just thinking out loud. But when I was at Home Depot getting into the parking lot, there's a little old lady with a cart with some potting soil in it, and she was moving really slow. When she got to her car, this is all happening while I'm trying to get into a parking spot. It's clearly struggling to get the dirt into her car, and there's people, like lots of people, it was very crowded, just walking right past her like she didn't exist. What the heck's that all about? How, that, I don't get that. I mean, I, I of course, when I got out of the car, went over and helped her, it took like two seconds. I'm just saying, I don't think it benefits anybody to choose to be blind to other people's problems. It's really, you know, it's it's so easy to help. It's a crap. I would hope when my parents are that old, God willing, that when they're out being independent, that there will be people to help them. That's all. That's neither here nor there to gardening, but neither is most of anything that happens in my blogs. So, now that I'm done with that little rant. Also, one other thing, I think I know I already said this, plants are really expensive this year. I was just at Home Depot, uh, which, you know, we all know by now, and the, like, six packs of Ivy and, uh, what's the, what's the other stuff? Creeping Jenny. They were $12. Now, Creeping Jenny can be kind of pricey sometimes, but ivy? Like, why? It's just, it was just ivy. I mean, that stuff used to be so cheap. It grows like a weed and it's normally very easy to propagate. So I, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and very lightly water this in now. Gerber daisies, I usually plant them a little bit higher up in the pot. And, uh, I try my best to not actually water them from directly above because the water can get into that crown, which is pretty delicate on the Gerber daisies and, and then it'll rot, which we don't want. So I plant it up a little bit higher so there's a little bit of air movement around it and then I try not to water into the center of the plant. There we go. What do we think? I like it. I wish those two matched, but it's just fine with me because I like all the different colors. I ended up putting this more fancy Gerber over here. I am ecstatic about the flower on this. Look at how big. I mean, that's just, it's huge. That is such a big flower. Lovely. Simple. It'll do for a while. The Gerbers, sometimes in summer when it gets really hot, they kind of go eh, a little bit. But this is good for now, and I'm okay with it. And I, there's still some space in this one where I can add some other things if I come across. Just really, really, really wanted to do some planting. And really, these are the first planters of the year. I mean, I've done a lot of arrangements, but these are the first outdoor springtime gardening, gardening fun time, having a garden party. What's happening in my brain? Happy, happy, just lots of happy. Oh, much happy. And like I've mentioned before, the they might be a little bit scraggly right now from being torn up. A couple weeks they'll bounce back and look great. Oh, just got some plants in. This vlog's already too long for this though, so that's gonna hold off for a few more days. It's just a few things, so that'll just be a very quick plant haul video. I mean, I do have a lot of other plants to cover, so I don't know, I'll figure something out, but it's just a few things. Don't worry, a few more days, we'll look at what's in there. And I will be keeping these in part shade for the next probably one to two weeks, just because they had their roots torn up and I want them to be able to keep up with taking in the water they need, because the sun is very, very strong. So that way the transition is just a little bit more gentle. That's it with that. And you know what, actually, it's time to wrap things up. I do want to say, Thank you to everybody. Everybody's comments have been so kind and supportive, and, and it really means a lot to me. So thank you very much. I'm feeling so, so much better today. Just hit 2,000 subs on this channel. Welcome, new subscribers. And I'm sorry. Things can be chaotic over here, and it's just, this is just fun. Everything is supposed to be fun and educational. Just going with the flow of life. However, to these thousand new people since December, you might be wondering what the heck is going on here. Normally my videos have been in this like tropical seeming oasis and I have it kind of explained before. That's my garage. Every single year I move those plants back out here, get lots of things planted and uh, transform. Hence 
tropical plant party. Every year is a tropical plant party. Every day is a tropical plant party. Uh, but not everything on here is always tropical plants. I don't live in the tropics. I'm in 6A, 6B. It's a blend of everything. Just fun gardening things. And in the Saturday vlog, sometimes just kind of whatever's happening. All right, that's enough. I'm happy to be back. I really look forward to hearing from everybody. I hope y'all are doing well. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up because it really does help the videos and I appreciate it so, so much. Subscribe as well because I do upload multiple times a week, except for last week, but normally minimum of three videos. And comment down below just for the heck of it. I love talking to y'all. Add my social media stuff down there. You can follow me and I'll follow you back. And above all else, most importantly, keep on growing everybody. Bye-bye.